I have no idea. I have no idea. Um, three? Three, maybe? Three. Three times. Don't judge me. Welcome back to the Sports Report. So with one heartbreaking loss this weekend at Akron already, we look to the football team to try and raise our spirits. It seemed like the perfect solution would be for the Zips to defeat Kent State at home and bring home the wagon wheel. STO was in the house and the weather was perfect. But could the Zips get it done on the gridiron? Saturday's game not only honored the Akron seniors, but would be the 54th matchup between the Zips and the Golden Flashes. Kent would get on the board first with a first quarter TD. But the Zips answered back with a 42-yard field goal. The Zips lead all-time series play 30-21-2. A third quarter, one-yard run would increase Kent's lead 16-3. The Zips, unable to stifle the Golden Flashes, would allow Kent State to reach the end zone three more times. Akron, unable to pull it together, loses this one 35-3. The Golden Flashes went back to Kent with the game and the wagon wheel. The wagon wheel went back to Kent with the Golden Flashes, What's the story behind the wagon wheel, you ask? Our David Coy helps you answer that. The wagon wheel, one of the most prized possessions in all of the NCAA. It currently resides in the Memorial Athletic and Convocation Center at Kent State University. But before it found its temporary home there, it was originally on a wagon that was owned by Bucktel College's founder, John R. Bucktel. Fame story says when Buckta was looking for a place to build his university, one of his wheels fell off his wagon near where Kent State is currently located. In 1902, while digging for a pipeline for Kent, Dr. Raymond Manchester found the wheel and took possession of it. In 1945, Manchester then suggested to use the wheel as a trophy during the Akron Kent games. It was used until 1955 when it was decided that the two schools would stop playing each other due to the lack of competition. Then, in 1972, the two teams came together and have competed ever since, and that night was the first time the two teams tied for that trophy. The final score was 13-13. Akron leads the all-time series with a record of 30-22-2. However, Kent leads the Wagon Wheel Series 20-19-1. The wheel is both painted blue and gold on each side to represent both schools. In 2011, the trophy was then sponsored by PNC Bank and created the first ever PNC Wagon Wheel Challenge. By doing this, the trophy has gained even more history and more backing. This wagon wheel has been a prized possession in all of college football, and this past Saturday just closed another chapter in its long history. I'm David Coy for the ZTV Sports Report. Such a fun rivalry, and I can't wait to get the wagon wheel right back where it belongs, right here in Akron. Now on to some guys who are very familiar with this long-standing tradition. Saturday, November 12, 14 seniors were recognized for their talents on the field. Of those 14, six starters got their careers three miles away. The Rubber Bowl was home to the University of Akron Zips football for nearly 70 years, hosting many events from high school football to major rock concerts. From the last wagon wheel victory in 2007 to the last home game in 2008, a pair of seniors shared their fondest moments. My most memorable would, would be uh, when we opened up my sophomore season against Penn State because that's I'm from Pennsylvania and I had a lot of like kids I graduated with that went go to Penn State. It would be the 08 season was my freshman season, my retro freshman season, and uh, our first two road game, our first two games were on road, and then my uh, I had my first start against Ball State, and that was my first home start. And that was, you know, I was young, and it was exciting to get out there after a year of redshirting and just watching all the home games from the sideline. So it was definitely that game. Regardless of their home field location, Akron Zips football will always have a permanent home in the hearts of these players. From the ZTV Sports Report, I am Wally Ball. We're definitely going to miss those guys next year. You're right about that, Stacy. But don't forget, there's still plenty of football left in 2011 with two games left on the schedule and buffle up this week. Let's see what head coach Rob Ionello had to say. So we got to get back on track. Um, I expect our team to be very resilient um, and to come back out this week and have a heck of a week. We have a two-game season left to play, 
And um, we got seniors who want to sit out in the right way. We got a young group of guys on the team that want to um, finish the season out in the right way to jump into next year. So we have a bunch of different things that we're playing for here as we continue to move forward with our team. Now the Zips won't be playing for a MAC championship this season. But to see who may be in that title game, we toss it to Dee and David to catch us up on the conference standings. Thank you, DJ and Stacy. And Dee, I'll tell you what, this past weekend was a heartbreaking weekend for every Zip fan. The wagon wheel was returned to Kent State, and the Zips suffered another loss. I think that means we should also inform the viewers of the MAC standings then. Yeah, we should. So let's move right into the East Column. Ohio leads the pack with an impressive record of 4-2 in MAC and 7-3 and and overall followed by Temple, who sits at a 4-3 record in the MAC and 6-4 and overall. Then Kent State and Miami, Ohio, both are 3-3 three three in the conference and 4-6 and overall. They are followed by Bowling Green and Buffalo. Buffalo was defeated by Eastern Michigan 30-17 last week, as the Bulls will look to bounce back against the last place Zips this week. So Akron sits at the bottom of the conference, and let's hope they can pick up some late season wins. Well, I guess your top pick on the west side of the MAC isn't doing as well as you thought they were going to do, huh? No, not really. And on that note, let's move over to the west. Northern Illinois has the most impressive record in the entire MAC as they are 6-1 in the conference and 8-3 and overall. They defeated Ball State 41-38. NIU is followed closely by Toledo, who are 6-4 overall. Eastern Michigan and Ball State come in behind the Rockets. Western and Central Michigan round out the bottom of the west. The season is winding down and three teams from the MAC have already been projected in bowl games. Toledo is projected to face Penn State in the Little Caesars Pizza Bowl. Ohio is projected to face Louisiana Tech in the famous Idaho Potato Bowl. And right now, Northern Illinois is matched up with Louisiana Lafayette in the GoDaddy.com Bowl. Three great teams to represent the MAC, and it's good to see that they're there. Good luck to them, and as they finish out their season, we can only hope Akron will come out with another win. I think it's now time for some more Zips trivia, if you're up for it. Well, sounds like a plan. Who is the all-time leading scorer in Akron women's basketball history? Stay tuned for the answer and men's basketball coming up after the break. <laughs> 